Hello and welcome to this episode of I Don't Know Jack About Parenting, where today I'm going to be talking about how involved is too involved. So the big question is this, how are parents like us, who don't have a manual, who are doing the best we can, who feel as though we aren't enough, how are we going to raise healthy, happy children who we are proud of and still keep our sanity in that process? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Ryan Roy, and welcome to I Don't Know Jack About Parenting, a podcast for parents who are being real with themselves. Hello, and welcome back to this episode of I Don't Know Jack About Parenting, where today I'm going to be talking about how involved in your kid's life is actually too involved. And uh, the impetus for this for me is uh, one, uh, as a father who likes to be very present with his children, uh, who does uh, various things throughout the day to make sure I have dedicated time towards them, uh, as somebody who gets involved in the kid's school, the one who gets involved in the kid's activities, um, at some point, these children, in my opinion, need to have an identity away from myself, away from home. And they get to have those things at school. In my case, I happen to be the PTA president of my son's school. I run the uh, father's movement at my son's school, which went from six dads having breakfast at the first breakfast two years ago to probably next week, I would be shocked if there's not well over 100 to 150 dads having breakfast with their kids at my son's school. Um, and that's just the kickoff. So there is a, uh, when I go to the school, I cannot walk through the hallways without 50 kids pointing out to my son if he happens to be around them, his dad's there which is great, right? There's a presence, but he also, that's his space for him to grow and learn outside of myself. Part of the challenge of being a leader in the, in, in, in the community period, right? Whether that's at school, whether that's in coaching little league a couple years ago, little league soccer, he just got into baseball. And the whole impetus for this particular podcast episode is I created a boundary today. Um, just last week, <laughs> we got involved with the Scouts. Uh, I, I have every ounce of me wants to call it the Boy Scouts, but girls are allowed in and, and they're Cub Scouts now. And I don't know if, I, I know at some point the boy part came off and I don't think we're, we're just Scouts or the Scouts. I, I, I really don't know how that works, but I do know that it's not the Boy Scouts anymore. So we're involved in the Scouts. We actually just picked up his uniform today after baseball practice. And at baseball practice, the scout leader, whose son is a good friend with my son, uh, it, he's been doing it a couple years. He looked at me and he says, hey, Ryan, I, I may need your help with something. I say, hey, what's going on? He says, hey, we're all on the same baseball team and we're going to have practices on certain nights that uh, coincide with Boy Scouts and... and uh, I may need you on certain nights to lead the Boy Scout group. And I looked at him and I said, no. And he was like, excuse, excuse me? <laughs> and I said, well, it's twofold. One, I have a lot on my plate right now and I can't make another commitment. I'm already thin uh, time-wise. Um, he goes, yeah, but you'll already be there. I said, but I am not getting in front of a group of anybody and not being prepared. So even if it's 12 boys, age eight, I am not getting in front of that group without knowing the material, without going through it, without studying it a little bit and not being able to execute because they expect me to be prepared. It's like a lesson plan for a teacher. You are a teacher in that hour for the week and I believe you need to be prepared. And right now I don't have the time to prepare. If you want me to just go there and do nothing, that's fine. I said, but here's the other point. He says, you know what I really need you to do is I need to keep, I need you to keep them in line. These boys get together, they get a little rowdy. And he, he basically said the guy that he co's with, that he co-leads this with, is a little bit of a pushover. He goes, and you're not. 
I said, well, that's fantastic. Here's the deal. I'm very involved in my son's life. I said, uh, I run the dad's group. He helps me prepare for that. He gets on stage with me. Uh, we do stuff every single day specifically. I go, I am at the school. So he sees me. I get up in the morning. I get him ready. I get him off to the bus. Because I work from home, as soon as he gets off the bus, he's with dad. Dad's doing his homework. Dad's uh, guiding him. Dad's getting him ready for a shower. Dad's doing daddy dog time. Now, I didn't run through all this. I go, when I came here today, we happened to be at baseball practice. I said, notice where the majority of the dads are. They're all on the field. I said, this is my opportunity to sit back and allow somebody else to coach, to pour into my kid. When I went to scouts last week and when I go next week, it's my opportunity to step back and watch somebody else pour into my child. I go, even when I go to the school, his teachers are aware of who I am and they actually ask me some feedback. Like, I don't want that. I don't want to have that much impact on him because when he gets out into the real world, I want him to be an independent person who could take instruction and guidance from a lot of people and learn to differentiate. I am not going to commit to being a Boy Scout leader, even temporarily, because I want that space to be a space where he learns and thrives outside of my presence. So I'll be there. I'll drop him off. I'll be the one to pick him up. But to be in the room, I don't want it. Even here on the baseball field, I don't know a lot about baseball. I know a lot about sports. I know a lot about discipline. I know a lot about teaching him the rules. I think a lot of dads, and I'm just be transparent here, you know, if, if you baseball dads are listening to this for whatever reason, like they know where their kids are at, but they're not coaching from a perspective of this is the first time he's ever played. And he's not the only one on the team who's the first time ever played. I'm going to give a, a, a positive and a negative on this. First of all, the negative is they assume the terminology of baseball is known by all the kids. They will pick it up because they're using it. But right now, the terminology of charge the ball is not something that my son is familiar with. So they're telling him to do something that he'll know what that means. Now, I get the opportunity this week to work on that with him. But I'll tell you this, the pitching coach recognized that he was new. And he was the last one to go up to pitch. And when all the other kids were playing, my son got a dedicated extra 10 minutes of this guy pouring into him. And I appreciated from a distance somebody on the field recognizing that, hey, this kid hasn't played a lot of baseball. And with raw ability, started showing him how to properly throw the ball, how to step into it, how to release it at the high point. Things I didn't even know, but I'm watching him from a distance and I'm saying, man, I appreciate this man and my son taking instruction from another man that from a distance, I trust. I watched how he approached him. I watched how my son listened. I watched how he improved in just five throws. I watched how that guy gave him a high five. And afterwards, somebody was like, oh, he got a little extra time with the pitching coach. And I said, oh, yeah, he's, I didn't realize he was the pitching coach. He said, yeah, his son's gone off and done really well. He coached his son and his son is a pretty good pitcher himself off to college now. And I sat back and I thought to myself, I don't need to be involved. There are plenty of men in certain positions who have certain knowledge that I don't have that get to pour into my son. But if I don't give them that opportunity because I'm a helicopter parent, I've talked about helicopter parents, I can't stand them. So when somebody asks me, says, hey, you're a good leader, can you lead for me in this area? My response is thank you for thinking of me that way. But I have to say no because I need other leaders to pour into my kids. See, I don't know jack about parenting, but I know that they're not mine forever. I don't know jack about parenting, but I do know that I need, it takes a village. And I need to allow that village to pour into my child. 
So I would encourage you as parents, you know, if, if you tend to hover or if you need to pull back, sometimes, sometimes parents need to pull back. Some parents need to pour in. I would encourage you to evaluate where you are. And if you need to pour in more, like if, if what I described is like, man, you do way too much, maybe you're not doing enough. And if you're the guy who's kind of like me is involved in a million ways, maybe you need to step back and allow other people to pour into your children because it takes a village and they need different perspectives and they're going to take the best of the best of each one that pertains to them and it'll make an amazing human being if you allow it. I'll see you in the next episode. Do you want to be the dad you wish you had? If so, go get my free book, Be the Dad You Wish You Had at be the dad you wish you had .com. Inside, you'll find my most effective 40 tips to quickly and easily transform yourself into the ideal dad. Go to be the dad you wish you had .com now and get it while it's free.